Today we're going to talk about that bullseye, that target that we all wear on our chests when we're dealing with other people. We're also going to talk a bit about the weather, things I've been doing around here, and some updates with the channel, because this is a vlog and that's what I do. <laughs> Stay tuned. Hello there. My name is Dee and this is Easing Anxiety. If you like what we do, please subscribe and click on the notifications button so you can be alerted when new videos are available. Thanks for joining us. Well, hello there. My name's Dee, as you may have already heard in the intro, but welcome. Welcome to Easing Anxiety. I hope everybody's doing okay. I hope that this video finds you handling the situations of the world as, as good as possible. Um, before I dive too much into our intro, I do want to mention that not only do we have the time code or chapters in the video description, so you could jump ahead to a section if you like to, but now that also shows up on the video. It's actually built into the video on that nice little funky, you know, scroll bar that comes across the bottom. So you can just slide up and down and see what chapter you're on and go to the chapter you'd like. Now, of course, I'd, I'd love it if you watch the entire video from start to finish. It does help other people find us and gets us more um, more attention through the, the searches with Google and YouTube. But, but if you want to skip ahead to a certain section, such as the feature today about this bullseye and skip the intro part, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> I promise. I wanted to mention weather a little bit. It's been crazy. In fact, I'm going to show a video here. Um, real quick, but on Monday of this week, here in Col Front Range of Colorado, we were 92 on Monday, have been setting a record for the number of 90 degree days, actually tying the record of the number of 90 degree days in the summer, making it tied for the hottest summer on record. And we had smoke in the air from our forest fires, and it was dry. And the next day, as the picture will show you, it was snowing. And um, it was really pretty and beautiful and I'm hoping that that moisture that came in with a high of 36 degrees that day um, may have helped the firefighters in putting out some of those although I know they're still going pretty good and it might be a while before that happens. The fires have been um, difficult for a lot of people I know especially in the western part of the US. We have several files burning. One is now the largest in our state history, and another one is now the fourth largest in our state history. And I know California is even worse off than we are. So again, for those those who are on the front lines battling these and for the families that have had to evacuate and the people that this has really um, created a lot of problems for, you know, keep them in mind. This is hard for a lot of people. And so many other things are going on um, I know we had the hurricanes earlier. Weather across the country is acting bizarre. <laughs> and, you know, just a lot of struggles going on with the virus and kids trying to go back to school and so many other things happening. So maybe it's good for us to step back a little bit and take a deep breath and realize we're going to get through 2020. <laughs> and 2021 is on the horizon and it's coming pretty soon. <laughs> maybe not soon enough, but it's coming pretty soon. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep this introduction as short as possible, um, but I just want to catch you up on a few things. The website is coming along. Yes, I'm actually making progress on the website. I've been spending the last 10 days almost nonstop working on it, and um, I have the home page done and the blog page done. This is all now blog driven. When I first launched the Benzo Free website, I didn't understand the whole blog thing very well. Um, I'm a database developer. I'm not much of a web person, so I was pretty out of touch. But now that I understand the whole structure around blogs and how they drive all the different content on your site, um, I'm making use of that, and I think this new site will be even better. This will be our easing anxiety site, which Benzo Free will become part of. But for now, and probably for the next six months to a year, Benzo Free will remain on the Benzo Free website, and we'll just connect to it as our, as our sister channel. Um, I just wanted to let you know that and that eventually we'll move it underneath with all its content and the podcast and everything will just be part of Easy Anxiety, but for now it's going to be maintained on its own website. I have also been loading um, our original 
podcast episodes onto our YouTube channel. I create a, a slate for them. They're still audio only, but I create a slate for them and make chapter markers and stuff like that so we can put them up for video. Eventually, we'll load all 67 of those episodes online. About a one or two a week, maybe over time. It just takes a while for me to do that and prep it and get it up online. But I think that's going to, that actually has started to help people who have never found our podcast before are now finding it on YouTube. And that's great. And it, I really like the fact that we can get an additional audience for that and help out people. Um, in fact, um, a lady named Teresa actually just piped in on the comments on YouTube. And she seemed appreciative to have found this and thought it was, was helpful um, to have found the podcast, in fact, the original podcast episodes. And another one of our listeners, Donna, piped in and started um, talking with her and having the give and take and helping her with some of the stuff that she had picked up from the podcast and from her experiences. Um, thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Donna. That's the kind of conversations I love it's starting to pick up a bit and I'm really excited about this and I am so, so thankful to all the people who have been helping out along the way. Thank you. Uh, what else? Um, got a new series coming in. I have hinted at this last vlog and that is anxiety tips. I think I might call it 101 anxiety tips or anxiety tips 101 or something. I'm not sure yet. If you got an idea, let me know. Hopefully next week or maybe the week after. Um, we'll get the first one out. Well, I don't know how long it'll take me to do all 101. <laughs> it could be six months, a year. I don't know for us to release all these, maybe two years. <laughs> it's a very grand goal. It's a big goal for me. Um, probably biting off more than I can chew. But you know, when I started the podcast, that's now on its 68th, 69th episode. I was biting off more than I could chew there too. And we're still going. And so I sometimes like to put those goals out there to see what can happen. And I'm excited about that. So please stay tuned Stay tuned for that coming up. And the last thing is our next video coming up, one that I'm going to work on, is going to be on COVID, anxiety, and relationships. Um, I've been getting some emails about this lately, and I think this is a great topic for us to talk about. So if you're dealing with relationship problems because of COVID, because of the isolation, because of the close quarters that most of us are facing, I've already started doing some research on it. I'm going to have some tips. Um, we're going to talk about it. We're going to explore that. If you want to send an email in to me in the next couple of days or comment in the next couple of days, I would love to include that too. Just make sure if you send an email to us, stay to the top that it's okay for me to use this in a video or podcast. If you do it through the feedback form at BenzoFree, which is benzofree.org slash feedback, you can just check the box there that says that it's okay for me to share it online. Um, as you know, any correspondence with me is always private unless you specifically say it's not. Um, for some people, you want to keep that conversations private, and I totally respect that, and I, I thank you. Um, I, I thank you for letting me know when it's okay to share. And if you send me something that I really want to share and you haven't told me, I often will reach out to you and say, hey, love this email. Do you mind if I share it? And it's okay to say no. It's also okay to say yes, but please keep it anonymous. Keep my name or location out of it. However you want to is fine. I love sharing the information that you all give me. And um, I also want to make sure, though, I respect your privacy and I respect our private conversations when you deem them to be private. So that's really important to me. So I will never, I promise I will do everything I can to make sure I don't break that confidence. Okay. Um, and that's it. Um, again, don't forget, uh, if you want more information, go to our website at easinganxiety.com. Right now, that still rolls to our Benzo Free site, the Easing Anxiety page on our Benzo Free site. But in about, in a few weeks, that's going to actually go directly to our new website as I get that up and, and online. And um, I, I'm excited for that. It's really coming along. I think that's going to be a great tool. It's going to be our center hub for all we're doing here. And I'm going to bring the blog back, um, the articles. I'm loading up some of the old articles. I'm going to start writing one or two here or there. And other people have offered to help. And I'm going to start tapping into that. Hopefully get some more authors online to provide articles. Um, so we have both printed content, podcast content, and video content. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> I have such grand plans. And <laughs> as you can see... Sometimes, you know, 
they get a little excessive. But, you know, I'll pace myself, do the best I can, and I'm still delivery driving, so that still takes some time. But since my wife did get a new job, I'm able to back off on that a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. And do a little more focus on this. And and I'm excited about what we're doing. And I'm going to, I don't know. You've heard this plenty of times. I'm rambling. I'm avoiding going to the feature because I just wanted to make sure there was something else to cover in the introduction. But I don't think there is. So let's move on to our feature. So you're probably wondering what a bullseye is and what I'm talking about when I say that. A bullseye, in my opinion, uh, it's just a term that makes sense to me. I'm sure somebody else has used it to define this too. But for me, it's it's a target. It's It's walking around... And this can be for any kind of trigger. It doesn't have to be a person. Um, but it's walking around and almost looking to be upset, to be angered, to be offended, to be saddened, to be hurt. So to me, walking around with a bullseye is that attitude that we have. And yes, I am a perpetrator of this significantly. <laughs> That's why I'm talking about it. But it's just, it seems like a lot of us, even more so today than in recent history, we get upset easily, very easily. And it's almost like at times we're even looking to be upset. We almost want to be upset or saddened or angered or frustrated. I mean, we never admit that. I mean, why would you want to be upset? Why would you want somebody to say something that hurt you or pissed you off or made you go dark for a while. Yet it feels like sometimes we're looking for it. We're, we're seeking it out. I know I do it. And this is a tendency I have. And it's not a tendency I like, but sometimes you get the urge. It's almost the urge to find out that if I go to this website or if I talk to this person, I, I, I want it to all go well, and they're going to say something wonderful, and I'm going to agree with them, and everything's going to be fantastic. It's like maybe there's that little hope that things are going to be great. Maybe that person that's been irritating you for years finally says, wow, you know, last night I woke up and I, I, I couldn't sleep, so I was, I was up all night, and I really thought about this, and I realized you're right. <laughs> How many of us have had that daydream that that might happen? I know I have many times. Or, or said, I apologize for what I did to you. Or, I'm sorry I hurt you. Or, whatever it is. I know I've talked to people and I've, I've struggled with this in the past. And other people have struggled with it. And some of you have emailed me about this. And... It does seem to be a common theme for those of us who suffer from anxiety. Some of our anxiety comes from this almost hidden desire to be upset, that bullseye that we have. And I think some of this stems from all kinds of places. I think there's a little bit of satisfaction that comes from having that bullseye struck. Um, a little bit of superiority. I mean, if, if something upsets you that you see somebody else doing, don't you sometimes get that quick sense of satisfaction like, well, I would never do that. Or I would never treat somebody that way. Or I would never think that. Or how could they? You know, there's that little bit of good feeling that comes from it. But then it usually turns into a bad feeling long term as you start to criticize that person, start to think about other people that do that too, or you start to group that person with other people or whatever it is. Anxiety is such a, we have such a need for control when we suffer from anxiety. We need everything to be perfect, to be just right so we're not triggered. And we're very irritated. The more we do control, the more we avoid those triggers, then the minorest trigger can be the one that really sets us off. Um, that's why I talk about expanding our world and, ex and getting out there and expanding our bubble and um, exposing ourselves to different people, ideas, places, events. Because the more we isolate ourselves, while appropriate during extreme cases, such as like anti-anxiety drug withdrawal and other ones for a while, you need to find a way to get back out there over time. 
But just like the rest of us, we're all flawed. I have my flaws. I talk about those freely here, and there's plenty more coming, trust me. But we all have them. It's, it, we're human. It comes with the package. We're flawed. And so are other people. They're flawed too. Um, like I mentioned, there's a little sense of satisfaction in it sometimes, a f sense of superiority. Um, the feeling of disgust feels good sometimes. The feeling of um, self-righteousness feels really good. And those feelings give us that little short-term high. But the long-term anxiety, the long-term stress, the long-term depression and anger, those don't feel so good. And those can really destroy us over time. You know, the funny thing is, is most psychologists will tell you that it's all very ironic because so often those things in other people that do trigger us are often the same things that we exhibit, <laughs> but we won't admit, or we don't even know about them. But the trait that really pisses you off or irritates you in somebody else is often the trait you have. I have seen this many times in myself. Uh, a perfect example of this, I'm just going to come out and say it, is I have trouble with people who are judgmental of others. I really do. It, it bothers me, and I'm working on it. I'm working on this. But I have trouble with people who are judgmental. But when people gossip or backstab or say things mean about other people, it bothers me. And I say things, and I'll talk to my wife about it, and I'll think things that aren't always the most positive things about those people. Yes, I do this. You do it. I know you do. We all do this. But it's something I'm working on, and it's something I need to work on. You know, it's funny. I was just thinking about the word judgmental. I just saw it here on the paper. I mistype judgmental all the time. <laughs> Shouldn't judgmental have an E after the word judge. It just doesn't make sense. How is it J-U-D-G-M-E-N-T? <laughs> anyway, sorry, tangent there, but I just had to be silly for a second. Corresponding with all of you um, has been good. It's, it's, it's helping me. Um, one of the things I love about it is that I get to meet each of you with almost no pretense. I do these videos, I do the podcast, share your stories, you write into me, tell me you like it or don't like it, and you share me your stories, you share me your experiences, and we, we connect on anxiety, we connect on anti-anxiety drugs, we, we find this connection. It's a way that brings us together. I don't know, I feel like there's a lesson in there because, because it's been a wonderful training tool for me to help me let go of some of my judgmentalness. <laughs> and yes, that's when I really realized what being, what being angry at people who are judgmental really is. I am now judgmental of them being judgmental. And it hit me. And I focused on that a lot. And I realized that. And I'm working on it. And I'm, I think between corresponding with you and seeing that in me, I can work on one of those flaws that I have. One of those things, and I say flaw meaning because it's something I want to change. Okay? Something I want to change. So I feel better and so that I treat people with more respect. But I hope it's okay that I shared that flaw with you. I'm always a little timid on some things because I don't and at all want to you to think that I'm ever judgmental of you all because I'm, I'm really not. That's why I love the emails is it doesn't come out and I'm not that judgmental. But it's something I do now and then that is not right in my opinion. And it's something I want to try to do less of. Because if you see other people doing something that irritates you and you're doing it too, then shouldn't we start at home? Shouldn't we start working on ourselves? I don't know. It's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm working on that one. One of my flaws, still working on it. Anyway, back to the bullseye. With with the bullseye that's on our chest, whether whatever your target is, it's it's important I think to stop and notice it. Just like I did with my judgmentalism about people being judgmental. <laughs> judgmentalism about judgmentalism. <laughs> 
a long word. Just as I had to notice that and noticing that started to help me make some changes. I think noticing these traits in ourselves is an important, a critical step for us to ease our anxiety, to release these negative thought patterns, to let thoughts come and let them go and let them pass, but not to cling on to, especially the negative ones, so that they just ruminate in our brains and keep going and going and going. You know, it's, it's like, say, say that you're at the grocery store, a perfect example of the bullseye is, and you, and you see someone with green hair or um, a spouse yelling at their other spouse or yelling at a child or wearing a shirt with a slogan that you find offensive or cutting in line or, or whatever it is that pisses you off or angers you or saddens you or frustrates you. I think it's good to notice it when you have that reaction to those people. See that in yourself. What is that reaction? What are you feeling when it happens? What are you thinking when it happens? Where does it take you? Noticing that, asking yourself why it's bothering you, I think is a great first step to start to dismantle those thought patterns. You know, maybe when you saw that gal with the green hair in the grocery line, you realized it was because your daughter five years ago dyed her hair to get back at you and you're still carrying that resentment. And when you can start to identify that, you can start to, like I said, dismantle it, break it down so that you can let go of those thoughts and not cling to them. I think it comes down to just that simple, that's one simple lesson is if you notice that you have this bullseye, and if you notice that as you're walking down, I use the grocery store because I go to the grocery store a lot and it's a perfect example. And you're eyeballing the National Enquirer and some title on that sets you off or the newspaper and that sets you off or somebody, you know, has been rude to you or cut in front of you or whatever it is. Whenever that happens and your bullseye has been hit, step back a second and just notice what's going on inside of you. Just notice why this is happening. Where did your thoughts go? What thoughts did you add to your perception of this person when that happened? I don't know. I think that's it. But I think learning to give people a little bit of grace, especially in times like this, is essential. Giving people a little bit of grace. Accepting them for who they are regardless if their opinion is on one side of the aisle or on the other side of the aisle or totally in opposition to what you believe, give them a little bit of grace because they are human too. And just like you and me, they're doing the best they can to figure out this damn thing, this, this journey we're on called life. Well, I think we should wrap it up right there. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm so glad to be back doing these. I'm excited about our community. I'm excited about developing this, keeping this going. And you all are just amazing. Just amazing. And, and I just thank you. Please let me know what you thought about today's video. Send us feedback at benzofree.org slash feedback. Or even better, just leave a comment on the YouTube video more comments there actually also helps more people find it so by leaving a comment subscribe to our channel if you haven't had a chance to yet um sign up for our mailing list at benzofree.org um benzofree.org slash subscribe and i hope to see you on the next video next one should be coming out next week on relationships and i really look forward to doing that one. so thanks for watching take care of yourself take care of those around you and be at peace. I'll see you next time.